Now, is think about the mechanisms of venous return. Now, it's fairly obvious that blood can get pumped to the feet or up to the head, because in the arteries you have a blood pressure that pumps it there. But how does blood get back from your toes back up to your heart, ready to be pumped out again? Now, it's important to understand this, because it can go wrong in various ways and give rise to some pathologies. But for now, let's restrict ourselves to thinking about the normal function, and we're talking about the mechanisms of venous return, how blood gets back from the periphery back up to the heart to be pumped out again. So how does the blood get back to the heart? Well, the first one I want to mention is the fact that veins have valves. Veins have valves. Now, a valve is a structure which will ensure a one-way flow of blood. And the valves in the veins ensure that the blood can flow from the periphery back to the centre. So if we think about a, a vein in the leg, for example, this might be the vein, and it contains valves. And the valves point up the way like this. So in other words, they will let blood go from underneath to on top, but then when the blood tries to go from on top back down again, well, the valve stops it. So the valves in the veins will be doing this, letting blood go from the periphery to the centre, but not from the centre back to the periphery. So the valves will be pointing up in this direction like this. It's a bit like a ladder, really. So if the blood is able to get from here to here, this valve will close and stop the blood flowing back again. Then you can get from there to there, and there to there, and so on. So there is a ladder, sort of a ladder, that the blood can climb up. So veins have valves. The next point I want to mention is it's related to blood velocity. Now, what do we mean by blood velocity? Well, if blood is going from a, a wider vessel into a more narrow vessel, what will happen to the speed of the blood? Well, if it's being forced from a narrow, well, from a wide vessel into a narrower vessel, the rate of blood flow is going to increase. The speed or the velocity of the blood will increase. And it's the same in the veins. If you take all of the small veins and add together their lumens, you actually get quite a wide lumen. But as it comes back towards the heart, so we have several veins here with a particular lumen. And as it gets back towards the heart, the vein, the vein is wide, of course, as it gets back towards the heart. But if you add that lumen up, and that lumen up, and that lumen up, collectively they're going to be much greater than that uh, lumen there. So as the blood goes back, goes into vessels with a relatively to smaller total lumen, the blood velocity will increase and that will help the blood get back to the, get back to the heart as well. So again, remember the blood is flowing up in in this direction like this. So the, the, the velocity of the blood will tend to increase as it gets back towards the heart. Now another factor in venous return is pressure changes set up during respiration. So let's think about this one. So if you put your hand on your tummy and you breathe in, which way does your hand go? 
But when you put your hand on your tummy and breathe in, your hand will go out. Because what is happening is that the diaphragm moves down. Now we can see this fairly clearly on this model. Here we have the abdominal cavity. Here we have the thoracic cavity. And here we have the diaphragm. Now when you want to breathe in, the diaphragm goes down and the ribs go up and out. Now because the diaphragm is going down, it's increasing the pressure on the contents of the abdominal cavity. And here, running through the abdominal cavity, we have this large vein here, a very large vein. What's this vein called? Well, this is the inferior vena cava, bringing blood back from the lower parts of the body, through the abdomen, back up towards the right atria. So as the diaphragm goes down, that's going to compress to a degree the contents of the abdomen, and that's going to compress the inferior vena cava. Now the valves in the veins will stop the blood being pushed down to the feet, so that will tend to help the blood go back up towards the heart in the thoracic cavity. In addition, when you breathe in, <coughs> the diaphragm goes down, the ribs go up and out. Now when that happens, what effect will that have on the pressure in the thoracic cavity? So the diaphragm's gone down, the ribs have gone up and out, what happens to intrathoracic pressure? Well, because the volume has been increased, the pressure will be decreased. There is a decrease in pressure. And that decrease in pressure tends to suck air into the... Sorry, suck, it does suck air into the thoracic cavity, of course, through the trachea. But it also tends to suck blood back into the thoracic cavity. So the negative pressure set up during ventilation will also suck blood back into the thoracic cavity using the same mechanism essentially that it uses to suck air into the, into the thoracic cavity during inspiration. So we've talked about the effect of the valves. We've talked about blood velocity. We've talked about respiratory pressure changes during ventilation. Now, this still didn't answer the question as to how the blood moves from there to there and from there to there in the first place. I can see that when it gets to there, the valve is going to stop it going back again. But how did it get up there in the first place? Well, the answer is that the veins are physically squashed as a result of the movement of adjacent structures. The veins are squashed. So you can you see if you can compress the vein, if you're going to squash the vein down, we squash this vein down. If I squash that, can you see it's going to increase the pressure in here if I'm able to squeeze that? If I increase the pressure in there, that will automatically tend to shut that valve and automatically open that valve. It's important to remember that the valves are only passive structures. The valves are not moved by active muscular movement, they just go with the pressure change. So I need some way of increasing the pressure in this vein to allow the valves to do their job. Now there's some veins which are inside muscles. These are called deep veins, deep inside the muscles of the leg. So these veins are actually inside muscles. And when the muscle contracts, what does a muscle do when it contracts? Well, of course, it gets shorter. So this muscle contracts and gets shorter. That means if the muscle's getting shorter, it's getting fatter. And when the muscle gets fatter, it's going to, when it contracts and gets fatter, it's going to press on this vein. So pressure changes caused by movement of adjacent muscles is one of the major mechanisms of venous return that in, in itself depends on the valves. So let's call this movement of adjacent structures.